So there's the Hillsborough Inquiry this week and basically the inquiry found that all those fans were unlawfully killed, which is awful. And 27 years worth of fight for justice has concluded and um, you know, I, it's, it's awful. And the worst thing about it is it could have been prevented. Why? Well, I wanted to share with you a story of what happened to me when I was a football supporter around that period. In fact, it was a few years beforehand. And football back then was a very different place, very different. And you would sort of go to a football match, and in fact you wouldn't. You would go to a fight and a football match would break out in the middle of it. And <laughs> you may laugh at that, but it was, it was true. Uh, hooliganism and violence was part and parcel of football at that period in time, back in the, when I used to go regularly, was in the early to mid eighties. And you would expect it, there would be a fight somewhere during the match, you know, it would just kick off. And if it didn't kick off during the match, there'd be a fight before or after, usually with away fans, but not necessarily. Um, it was, you know, it was quite a tense and weird sort of place to be. And I remember many seasons where it was the last game of the season and either Southampton was trying to stay up or somebody else was trying to stay up. And at the end of the match, there would just be a massive fight, a pitch invasion, everybody would be fighting and it was just bloody chaos, basically. Um, and you'd have to be suicidal to go to an away match because you'd almost certainly be attacked by the, the home fans waiting for you to come off the train or something like that. It was awful. It really was. It's amazing because the, the, what used to happen was my dad's friends used to take me and then it was my sister's boyfriends and so on and so forth. And, um, you know, I really did experience life a fair bit uh, back then. And there would, there would always be fights and stuff happening. Uh, but also it was a very different environment. Most of the grounds had no investment in them. You basically, most grounds were just cow sheds with a pitch in the middle, uh, which wasn't very well maintained, especially in the middle of winter. And um, you also had to stand on the terraces. So uh, when you stood on the terraces, you could be in row 25 and if a goal was scored, you'd end up in row one or halfway across the other side of the terrace. I'm sure people who were around in that era will remember exactly what that was like. And there was some guy with a cigar in front of you smoking and um, somebody with a pie. And it was a very, very different world. You know, everything feels very sterile uh, compared uh, to that world now. Um, but inevitably things have progressed and moved on and you know, safety standards have improved. And it's considered, apart from the gratuitous swearing that takes place at a match, uh, very much a family occasion. Uh, but back then it was a very different world. Violence was common and it, it totally expected. And, um, the standards all round were, were were much different and in fact the violence and all of the problems with pitch invasions and competing fans you know deciding to attack each other got so bad that a lot of grounds decided to put up fences and obviously this is where the Hillsborough issue comes to the fore here because without the fences the, the outcome of that situation would have been significantly different but um, I actually had you know an experience that scared the life out of me and changed my perception in terms of whether I wanted to go to a football match. Um, in the 1984, uh, I'm pretty sure it was 1984, FA Cup semi-final uh, between Southampton and Everton. And that was being held at Highbury. And what this lesson, you know, this taught me a few things, which is probably, I, I don't know why I'm showing this video, I just wanted to get it off my chest, I guess, but I think there are life lessons in here as well. But that taught me, you know, that if there is something wrong that really it doesn't matter what the personal consequence, you should stand up and fight for it. Because when I look back now, it's with regret that I realized that what happened in the Epic Cup semi-final of that year was a precursor to Hillsborough. And it really saddens me that uh, nothing ever happened to change that situation until all of those deaths and all of the subsequent issues in and around that period. It was totally preventable, absolutely, utterly, totally preventable. And if I ever see anything like this again in future, you know, I will sit there and fight tooth and nail for changes rather than just accepting that that is part of football. But what happened to me in the FA Cup semi-finals, it was at Highbury that year and uh, we were at the clock end. So Hampton fans were at the clock end. I remember it so well. I remember all the detail about that day so well, probably because um, Southampton conceded a late goal and never went on. <laughs> to the FA Cup final, but also because of what happened. And what happened was we arrived early to try and get a good position on the terrace. But as the crowd began to arrive, it was pretty obvious to us that there were more people 
than the stadium could really realistically uh, take. We don't know why that was, um, but we tried to get a decent position somewhere near the front behind the goal. And um, as, the, as the match got nearer and nearer, the crowd got bigger and bigger and a crush began to develop. And this was a big crush because it was you, you were used in terraces to standing there like this and, you know, being having difficulty, you know, scratching your, your nose or whatever. That was sort of the way that it worked back then. But this was a really bad crush and it was really difficult. Um, to, we couldn't even lift our arms up. It was that bad. Um, and it was getting worse and worse and worse. And, you know, I was beginning to having trouble breathing. Like I couldn't exhale properly. And I looked to the guy that I was with. Um, who was the son of, a, of, of our next door neighbour, who used to live behind us. And we were getting a bit concerned at this particular point, but the concern uh, went into overdrive when this guy in front of us, who was about 60 odd, um, lost his footing and he disappeared underneath us. And the crowd kept on moving forward and he was down there somewhere and we're thinking, this is crazy. So we started shouting and screaming that, you know, to, for people to move, get out of the way or do whatever we could. Uh, but it was almost impossible. There was there was such a deep crush that we couldn't um, do much about it. Um, but eventually what happened was at Highbury, I'm pretty certain that um, there were no fences at Highbury. There were it, areas were segregated, but at the front of the pitch there were no fences. And the terraces used to go underneath the pitch level and then you'd have to climb up and over. Um, so that's what people started doing. We started spilling onto the pitch to relieve the pressure. But what happened next was the shocking bit because we spilled onto the pitch um, and the police there decided that they would just chuck us straight back or basically encourage us um, to not be on the pitch. And the way that they did that was to get the truncheons out and smash us over the head and in various parts of our bodies. And uh, my, the friend I was with took a blow to the head so hard that he had a massive bruise come up on the side of his head. It was unbelievable. And um, and we just basically thought, sod this, we're not going back in there. Um, and, you know, there's this guy down there, we, we don't know where he's gone, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but we just basically uh, had to find a way out of that situation. So we basically ran along the side of the pitch and up the aisle. Um, but that brought us into contact uh, right next to Everton fans, which was not the smartest thing we'd ever did. Um, and they weren't exactly friendly towards us. And in fact, they spat at us, some guy urinated on us. Uh, things were chucked at us um, and abuse was hurled at us and it was like out of the frying pan and into the fire. It was not uh, a great thing, but at least we managed to escape and we were still in the Southampton side. It's just that we were getting a lot of abuse from the Everton fans. But you sort of expected that. That's how it was in those days. Um, so, yeah, we escaped up the side and then we eventually we'd gone right from the front right to the back. But we just thought we're not we're just not going down there. Any, you know, we're not we're not going to subject ourselves to that. And we ended up climbing all over the, the clock end, which was just as bad because we could have fallen and broken our neck or cracked open our skull and had a problem that way. But yeah, I remember distinctly climbing all over the, uh, the, the clock end to try and get a bit better view of the pitch. Um, so yeah, it was, it was pretty chaotic, but I remember that feeling of being in that crush, just thinking, this is not right. This is not right. And I think that's probably one of the reasons I'm sharing this video is because I've never really told that story properly before. And seeing the Hillsborough stuff, you know, I had a browse and looked on the web and relived that moment. I remember seeing all of that unfolding and just thinking, Jesus Christ, that could have been me. And, you know, I also think that really that should never have happened. It really should not have happened. The policing should have been better. The facility should have been better. There shouldn't have been the crush. There shouldn't have been all those issues. And I experienced it, you know, five years or so before that actually happened. You could tell that something was going to happen like that eventually. It was eventually going to be a massive problem. Um, and yet nobody did anything about it. The police must have known that there were potentially issues and the clubs could have done stuff. I mean, you can't live life full of regrets, but you know, it makes you realize that when you see situations like that, you really should stand up and say something and, and, and make a difference rather than just accept that that's the, that, that the current normal is the way it should be. But uh, yeah, you know, I don't know why I decided to do this video, maybe just to get that off my chest, but it saddened me, you know, Hillsborough immensely because, um, you know, it, it was almost inevitable it was going to happen and it really should have never happened. And I feel so sorry for the families that it happened to, especially who, who, who lose young people that just went to watch a football match. And thank God that 
football is so much safer nowadays and um, that you can go to a football match without that sort of fear and it's much better organised and so on and so forth. A bit too expensive, but nonetheless, you know, it is a much safer and enjoyable way to, to watch a football match now. Um, so yeah, no, a very sad week, a very sad experience, um, but I sort of feel lucky that in fact, you know, it didn't happen to me, but I also feel a bit uh, of regret that nobody did anything about it because yeah, I think you could and should have predicted that there was going to be a major problem at some point or the other. If there were fences at Highbury, maybe that would have ended differently. Maybe we wouldn't have spilled on the pitch and that would, wouldn't have ended in such a, a sort of nice manner. But um, yeah, I just thought I'd share that story with you and uh, hopefully you've gained something from it. At least, you know, I've got that off my chest and uh, maybe the lessons are to be learned all through. Uh, unfortunately, it just came with the cost of a huge amount of loss of life, which should never have happened.